So now that I um, took the clamps off the wood and I'm starting to shape my my design on the head of the guitar. Um, you see, I uh, took the clamps off, made a little design for the, and I'll just work with my uh, belt sander to get it down pretty close to what it looks like on that drawing there. So I had a piece of Coca-Cola wood left over from another job I did. So I cut it kind of thin and I'm going to over, overlay it on top of that. So that'll be my headstock. So I uh, cleaned up the binding a little bit, sanded it down. Looks pretty good. And uh, I'm going to make my little holes. I'm um, using diamonds. And so I made the big holes and then I'm going to go and cut it either with a Dremel tool or the little saw by hand. So I'm working on these uh, diamond cutouts here. And uh, I've used a bunch of different tools. I use my Dremel. I've used a couple of these different little tiny saws. I use this, which is the, the metal saw. And now I'm trying to get the corners pretty sharp. So I'm using a razor blade. It actually works pretty good. So this is the first time that I've used just acetone on these diamonds. Um, I decided to try acetone. It actually works pretty clean. You don't make a big mess on your hands. And you can see I have to sand around the sides um, to smooth it out. But um, there's actually three very thin. So I flipped over um, the body here and I just put a little reinforcement. I did some uh, two-part epoxy, um, the five-minute kind, and I just um, put it on this so it'll keep it a little pretty strong. Um, I still have to sand the front though and I'll just clean this up a little bit once it dries. So I now cleaned up all the little areas around the binding. Um, and it looks pretty pretty good uh, once i stand the guitar some of these areas right in here around the tips they probably will look more cleaner um, but um, i try to angle it so it all meets real real good but as you can see if you look really close along the wood there's some imperfections but they won't show once I get the stain on so now I will uh, work on the, the neck I'm gonna form this down and we'll see what it looks like sanded it down on the belt sander to match. Now I just got to smooth it out. And there you got my little uh, headstock overlay in Coco Bola wood. So here's my fretboard. It's a uh, bird's eye maple. I actually had this piece left over and I found it in my uh, extra wood bin. And so I'm trimming it up as I go. Um, I cut a little slot here. 
It's going to have like a, a real thin um, nut up there, kind of like a telly nut. It's uh, gold. I had left over also from another, another build. And now I just got to clean it up and radius it down. So I'm going to work on the fretboard for a little while. Um, I put a couple screws on both ends. It'll hold the fretboard in place. So when I go up and back, I won't slide. And then I got my little sanding block. And I'll start off with a real coarse paper. This is from a belt sander. And I don't know exactly what grid it is. It's probably like 60. Anyways, I'll start here. I'll thin this out. And um, then I'll smooth it out. And then I'll do my uh, frets after that. When I go to make the lines for my um, frets, um, I usually have an old uh, neck laying around and I just line it up and I'll just mark it right along the same line. And that's pretty much how I get the, the dimensions where the fret should go. Okay, so I'm going to do some uh, fretting now, uh, cutting the holes for the frets, I should say, uh, the slots. Um, Basically, I got one of these. It was my father's from years and years ago for whatever reason to use it for, I have no idea. But it, since it has a pretty flat edge on it, what I usually do is just put it down against the square side and I line up the line and I could just go ahead and start, start sawing the slots for the frets. And then I'll just move it to the next one and keep going down the line. That's uh, pretty much how I do it. I put these screws here to hold the frets, I mean to hold the, um, the, the board in place. As you can see right here. And I put one down here as well. And on the other side. And this way the board won't move. So it took me about a half hour to, to cut all these frets fret slots and um, that's it I uh, decided to do my inlays in black I think it looks pretty cool it'll contrast off of the light color fretboard uh, basically I just cut some uh, binding and then I'll have to inlay them uh, cut some grooves so when I'm cutting the inlays, to, uh, I will use my razor blade and I will first draw a line around, around, around the piece and then I will sometimes use a razor blade and, and kind of score it around inside the thing and then I'll use either a dremel or, or a little chisel, it depends. So now I figured out the best way to do it was, would be to score it. You score it on the lines that you draw real slow and then I'll come in with my Dremel and I'll rip out the center and then I'll score it a little deeper and then I'll use my chisel this chisel and I'll just go real slow and um, it'll come out really good. So I'm doing my inlays here after I cut the cavity and I'm using my binding that I cut. It's the thick binding and um, I'm using acetone for the glue pretty much. So I'll wipe it in the cavity then I'll wipe the acetone on the binding it's very, very sticky. See, it sticks to my finger, so it should stick in the wood here. And I'll just put that in there like that. And then I'll just let it dry for a while, and I'll probably uh, go over it, sand it down nice and smooth, and any little spots that I miss, I'll backfill it with some, uh, with some wood from the, from the fretboard here. And that's how I do my binding. 